Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. As business owners, I truly believe that we deserve to retire much richer. Throughout of our life, business life, we work really hard. When it comes to retirement, we have to make sure that we have planned to retire richer and enjoy the fruit of our life. How we can do that? The topic of my today's speech or talk is, it's far easier to own your business, your place of business than you think. How we could do that? How we could buy the place of business? Because we are paying rent every month. We are paying rent as a renter and we are getting the landlord richer and richer. Imagine if we pay $10,000 a month rent in one year, we will pay 120000 Throughout the life cycle of a business, 20 years roughly, we are paying over and above two and a half to $3 million. And that two and a half and $3 million, it's coming off our net profit as a rent and going to someone else's pocket. So we have to plan how we could do this. How could we purchase the property that we are running our business out of and own it so we can pay rent to ourselves and do not pay someone else's mortgage. So now we'll see that there are certain myths that are misunderstanding that people think it's very difficult to buy their own property. The biggest myth or the biggest misunderstanding in this area is that people are told that you need 35% down or 35% as, as, as a down payment in order to buy your commercial property. This is a myth, this is a mis misunderstanding. Throughout the, today's program, I will show you how you could buy your property or your place of business for anywhere from 10, 15, 20, 25% down. The other myth that it's, it's, it's uh, people um, misunderstanding that they have that, oh, the process is too complicated and it's overwhelming and usually people in the business are too, too busy in their own business uh, affairs that they, they may not have enough time to devote to, to, to take care of purchasing a, a commercial property. No doubt, all the business owners, we know that we have accountants, we have lawyers, we have insurance brokers, and other professionals that they are working with us in order to make sure that we are having a successful business. By buying a commercial property, we have to add to that professionals. We have to add uh, another mortgage and uh, broker, real estate broker, and so on. So it's not complicated when you have the right professionals with you. The other misunderstanding that it's very um, going around with, with the businesses that, oh, it says if I fall behind the payment for the mortgage, uh, maybe it will affect my business or maybe they will, they will, the bank will come after my business. No. Commercial properties are usually bought by a different or under the, the uh, different corporation. So when you buy a cor property or when you buy the commercial property, you buy it under the uh, different corporation. And that different corporation is different from the ownership of your, your business. So anything happen with that building in that, in that corporation will not affect your business. If you are falling behind in the payment, you can negotiate with the bank and, and come up with ways that you could be able to pay that, that uh, monthly mortgage. BDC, Business Development Bank, is one of those banks that they will really negotiate to make sure that your business is thriving at the same time your property is, is well organized and well run. So they, they sometimes may come up with, uh, for example, do not pay the whole mortgage, just pay the portion of the interest till a few months till you will be able to get, give the whole mortgage. So the other um, uh, misunderstanding or myth Myth says that, uh, oh, uh, commercial real estate is uh, not too lucrative and it's risky. This one is, is not true, especially and especially for the one 
who own the, the property and run the business out of it. For example, if you own a, a plaza and you, your business is there, you are a renter, you pay rent anyway. So there is no risk for, for you. Uh, for for uh, speculators, yes, maybe if someone is speculating and someone is in buying as an investor and for him to find a, a tenant might be difficult. But for you, as you are the, the renter and you are paying the rent anyway, so the risk is not that much. And yes, commercial properties are far, far, far lucrative than the residentials. So let's see what the advantage that we have when we, when we uh, buy our own properties. First and foremost is an excellent retirement plan because when you run this business for 20 years and you pay rent and rent and rent, in 20 years or so, hopefully that the property will be paid off. And then when you retire, you could sell the property and make a good amount of money, millions of dollars to retire with, or you could even still pay uh, as a retirement, uh, you know, month and month, collect rent, and you, you still have a far better retirement plan. Aside from, from that, the pride of ownership, to own the plaza or the place that you run business out of, it's very, very interesting and very, very good because you will have, you will have, you will run the business from that and, and the pride of ownership is, is uh, something that, um, that you, you, you will do that. The other advantage that we could uh, say is uh, uh, when you have um, owned the property that you are running business out of, it's a solid foundation that you are building for your business. And, and it's far better to be your own landlord than be someone else's tenant. Owning a, a, a commercial property is owning a, a big asset. And that affect all your, your business deals, affect your own business, affect your mind of, state of mind, and all those. So, and also you could use that, that, that uh, commercial property as, as leverage and leverage it and use it as a collateral to, to get more loans from the bank, to expand your business, to, to um, even if you need to go to a new venture. Because as business owners, we always think of uh, new businesses, uh, new ventures, new ideas. So when you own the business, you can, you can have the property and you can use that property as, uh, as, as a source to collect money from the bank and, and use it for, the, for that uh, purpose. The other advantage of the, the owning the business could be uh, the protection against rising rent. We all know um, that lately the prices of the commercial real estate has really risen and that has that as and will affect very um, drastically in the rent for the commercial property. So when you have owned your business uh, or your uh, property, then you can control the, the rent. Usually the rent you can pay to the landlord is, is the negotiating rent. But when you are your own landlord, then you will see how much you should pay. There are certain planning and, 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 and paying more to, to, um, as, as, a, as, a ten, as a land, as a tenant uh, will have some benefit. For example, if you pay a little bit more uh, rent, the commercial property value is based on the income. So when you increase your rent, so as you're increasing the value of the property. Once you increase the value of the property, then the bank will give you much better rate, interest rate, lower rate, and also if you want to cash out some money, then you would be able to get uh, more money out because now the value of the property is far higher because you have paid more rent. But if, if, if that doesn't suit you and you pay less rent, you can still pay less rent and, and uh, will, will own the property so that that will help as well. And also, when, once you are um, there, you will not be forced out. If you own your own uh, um, uh, property, then you will not be forced out of the, 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 the property or the location. Because usually, when we are in one location, we have our own customers, people know that we are there, and you don't want to move every day. 
So by owning that property, you make sure that you are there and you, nobody will force you to, to, um, to move out. And also, you know, you don't want to pay someone else's mortgage because you own the property, you pay your own mortgage. So that, the advantage lists are so, so long. So I could, I could talk about it a lot, but the other advantage could be that you, you know, when you move to these uh, commercial properties, you have to uh, customize the place. You have to uh, make uh, you know, certain offices there and certain showrooms there and workplace here and there. So each time you move to a new location, you have to spend money to the lease improvement. But if the place is yours, then you, you make that as best as you can and you do not need to repeat that. You do not need to keep improving other people's property. When you move from one location to the other location, you still have to um, improve the property because you are there, you are running business and all those costs come out of your pocket. But if you own your property, then you will do it once and you do it right, then you will save all the money for the future. Um, uh, so. With advantages, as we say, it's such a long advantages that to own, to own the properties, to own the, your business property, which uh, certainly I encourage you. There might be some difficulties on, on owning these uh, commercial properties. For example, raising the fund was, is one of them that um, to, to have the fund in order to buy a property. If anyone owned uh, residential property in the last 10, 15 years in Toronto, uh, the market has risen so much and the equity has been so much there. Um, those equity could be anywhere from two, three hundred thousand dollar to a million dollar, and people they have their houses, uh, which in the trade is called dead money because the money is there. It's your equity in the house. That fund, that money in your house, you can take some out and you can buy your property, which is, which is attainable to many, many, many business owners who own their own houses in the last five, 10 years. The other issue is, of course, credit score, the credit issues. Many people are, are uh, being uh, uh, careless with their uh, score of uh, credit, uh, which could be an issue, but uh, uh, again, there are ways to, to fix it. There are companies that they will charge maybe a thousand or two uh, and, and over time of six months to a year, they will repair your, your um, credit. The other difficulties that we might see is the location. <coughs> Sometimes, if you are in a one location and you do not want to move out, uh, that would, might be uh, some difficulties. Uh, but if you, if you are in one location and the, the landlord doesn't want to sell it and you are part of a big, big glamorous uh, uh, plaza, then you will see how much would, it, would you be losing if you move from that location maybe a block away, maybe uh, a si uh, um, on the other side of the street, or something that you might lose 5-10% uh, of uh, your clientele or your customer, but in the long run, in 15-20 years, is that 5 or 10% customer, is, is will it be uh, equivalent to having the whole property paid off and having a, a, um, you know, a richer uh, ret uh, retirement. So those are the, the, you know, the, the benefits and cost analysis that you should do. Sometimes with, with commercial um, uh, real estate, there will, might be uh, environmental issues that also there are certain ways that they can uh, work on it and, and get resolved the environmental. They would clean it because sometimes if, if the property is, is uh, contaminated, there are certain companies that they can come and clean it. Uh, and uh, one of the audience in the, the, um, here, as I know, they have cleaned one of the property uh, with far less, because when the property is contaminated, the purchase price is very low. So you spend a little bit more money and then you clean the property and for a property, for example, three, $3 million, you can buy it for 1.5 to $1.7 million. You spend another two, $300,000 you clean it and, and, and the value of the property is maybe $3 million. So you save two, $300,000. Let's get you prepared. If you are convinced that you should buy your property, you know these difficulties that I, that I explained, and then how could you get ready to, move, to take the next step and purchase your uh, property? 
In preparation, of course, for, uh, one thing is for sure that you have to uh, repair your credit. As I mentioned earlier, there are companies that they charge anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000. Between six months to a year, they clean up the, their credit and they will make sure that your credit is high enough in order to be able to buy a, a bigger property. The other one is that uh, purchasing this property is, is a plan, is a one to two year plan. So you make sure that you will pay in, in the one or two year plan, you pay a little bit more tax. Uh, you will be generous with uh, paying tax because that will affect uh, your, your ability to buy a property, your co commercial property. So uh, if you have a, a wealthier financial statement, uh, whether it's a um, balance sheet or, or income statement or so on, that will help you to have a better financial statement, a richer financial statement. So that will give the bank assurance that you are business and you are able to purchase this commercial property and pay for it. So in a year or two that you are buying properties, talk with your accountant, make sure that the financial statement that he's preparing is, is better, is uh, nothing, nothing uh, incorrect, but within that reason to make sure that the healthier uh, financial statement and also be a little bit generous to pay a little bit more tax so that the financial statement looks that it's profitable, looks that it pays tax, and, and that will help you when you qualify for, for mortgage. Because once you are uh, realist, uh, once your financial statement is healthy, is good, then the interest rate that the bank will give you will be much better. So if you pay a little bit tax here, then you will save for the next five years in the mortgage because the mortgage rate will be low. The qualification requirement for the, from the bank will be far better because your, computer, your um, um, financial state, statement is, is, uh, is uh, cleaner and better. Of course, cash flow is important that you have to be able to um, manage it well uh, in order to be able to find. I will go through two examples. I have bought properties for my clients who own their own businesses, uh, many, many, many of them. Uh, but I just gave you two examples here. Uh, one was a client that he's here also. Uh, he owned and ran a convenience store in a plaza in Brantford, Ontario. Uh, for many, many years, he was paying rent. And of course, someone else was getting rich. So we talked and I start negotiating with the landlord. The landlord initially was very hesitant to sell it, but uh, you know, he, he priced the plaza, to be honest, a little bit higher than the market. But for, for my client who is paying rent every month and has been paying for the last 15 years, that extra um, cost or you know, raising the price wasn't that significant to stop him from this plan. So he did not pay 35% down. He only paid 10% down. And beside that, we got him another 15% from second mortgage and then another 75% from the bank. So by him putting the 10% was very feasible. The property was around $1.6 million. So he only paid 160,000 down. So when you pay that much down, and instead of 30 or 25 or 30 percent down, which has come to four or five hundred thousand dollar cash, which many people may not have, so he was prepared to give a little bit extra interest for the first few years because the second mortgage, as we all know, is charging more. If you stick with this point that oh, the second mortgage is is, is paying is um, having um, interest rate, higher interest rate, and I may pay more. Don't, don't think about that. Why? Because you may pay 5, 10, 15, 20,000 more in, in interest. It will not be much more than that. But imagine the benefit that you will get from that 20, 10 or 20,000. It will be in millions of dollars when, when, you, when you sell the property uh, after your retirement. So this property was bought with 
160,000 instead of 300 or 400,000. The other, the other uh, example that we have is uh, a property that I own and uh, we bought it uh, uh, for our business. Uh, it's in Scarborough, it's, uh, it was uh, a three building industrial factory business. There are two tenants and there's us. We bought that and we bought it with 20% down. The 80% the bank comes, yes, it charged me a, a percentage or two more than the, than the um, conventional bank, but that one or two percent more in the duration of two or three years may cost me 20,000, 10,000, 15,000 more, but I will inshallah hope to, to pay off this, this uh, property in 20 years or so, then it will be, uh, the profit will be in millions of dollars. So do not stick with this, uh, that uh, idea of that, you know, oh, if I go for second mortgage, it will, be, uh, it will be a higher interest rate. Yes, it will be higher interest rate, but the benefit will be far more than, than that extra money. The other thing that it's very common in the commercial um, business is the VTB or vendor take back or a portion of the money that the seller will be lending you for two, three, four years. Uh, so imagine if, if the, there's a plaza that you want to buy, you may put 10 or 15 percent, another 10 or 15 percent you can negotiate with the, with the owner to sell, to give you uh, as a mortgage. Those VTVs could be zero interest rate, could be 5, 10, 10 percent interest rate, but all depend on the negotiation and how desperately you want to buy and how desperately the seller want to sell it. And then with combination of your down payment and the VTB, then the rest can be um, found from the mortgage companies. So in any way, to summarize my, my um, uh, today, you can buy properties with less than 35%. You have to buy it because you have to plan a, a richer retirement that you deserve because you work hard. We all know business owners are working 24 seven compared to our employees that they work from nine to five and after five they don't think about business. But we as business owners, we are 24 seven thinking of business and working on business. So you can buy the property with 10%, you can retire richer. And if the only key component to the whole deal is that you have to have the right professional with you. You have to deal with people who knows and who have done this kind of deals, the commercial deals. Commercial real estate and residential real estate is, is quite different area of expertise, quite different area of working. So you have to find out a right broker, real estate broker, a right mortgage broker, and then you would be able to buy your property, whether it's an office that you are renting now, whether it's a plaza, whether it's a store or a factory or warehouse, whatever it is, you can buy it and you can keep it till you run your business and retire with that, whether you want to sell it or whether you will be collecting while you are retired. Thank you very much. Now we go to the questions. Thank you. What was the question? So I was told that even if the, the business had some assets, some machinery, then the bank would come and, uh, and give you uh, credit. Yeah, the banks, the yeah, the question is that if, uh, if uh, someone has equipment in a business, then the bank could uh, buy the property for him with zero down. In the eyes of the bank, see how much equity you have, how much money you have, how much asset you have. So if those machineries that you have in the, in the company, worth something, that will be monetized. How much? And based on that, they can help you. If you imagine have machinery worthing maybe $100,000, and you want to buy a property, they just see that as 100,000 you have credit. Uh, quite honestly, in this country, 
one thing is very rare, and that's you as a business owner. Money is not an issue. Equipment is not an issue. Technology is not an issue. You are the issue. If, if you are a good business person, that's what the bank needs to know. And, and the other thing is, a lot of time, if people have personal issues with commercial bank, commercial properties, the good thing is that the bank will see beside you the actual property. Property has to make sense for the bank. Property, they will see what's the rent roll, how much income they have, what's the size, what's the future, and so on and so forth. The bank, to buy a commercial property, will assess the property itself also, and you also. So that's why it's not an issue. As long as you have an open mind, be creative, deal with the right people who have the experience and the knowledge, and then, then finding properties, finding the machineries, doing the businesses is not an issue. It's very easy. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, in buying, uh, one of the audience is asking if a, how uh, important is appraisal. When bank invest in uh, any property or giving mortgage in any property, they will send an appraisal. What the appraisal sees? Commercial property value mainly is driven by the income. So if the income of the property is high, so is the value. If the income is low, so is the value. So when the appraiser comes, he will see the property and all these, but at the same time, aside from other factors, which there are factors of replacement cost or the, 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 uh, the other, uh, there are three different factors that the appraisal are based their price. The main is the, the income. So sometimes when you buy the property under a new corporation and you are a tenant, then you can rent it a little bit higher. Not, not too much, but in, in within the reason. So by renting it higher, you are actually increasing the value of the property. And the appraisal will come higher. When the appraisal come higher, so is the, so is the mortgage. So the bank will see it more favorable. Okay, any difference between uh, commercial and residential together? For, the for example, the uh, uh, up stairs maybe should be residential. Uh, residential or the down stairs where out or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the question is that what if if there is plaza and first floor and there is residential in the top? Usually they see. Uh, they, they are seen as commercial property. Mm -hmm. They are seen as commercial property. But if someone buys that and move in and buys as a house, then they might see it different. But any property, some banks, any property above three units, they see it as commercial. But some banks see it after f every four, four units. So up to four units, they see it as a residential. Above four units, they see it as commercial. But there are some banks that they see up to three units as a residential, more than that as a commercial. Yes, no problem. Any more questions? Thank you.